Well, uh, that's completely feasible. Uh, honestly, uh, it, it could be done. It's a question of, of, of the society which declares that it's going to need access for something has to has, really has the obligation to provide it. You know, it's sort of like an unfunded mandate. I mean, it's an un, it's a it's a it's a kind of a morally unfunded mandate when when society decides, oh, we're just going to do this new 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 right, and oh well, you do something like that, so it's your responsibility to provide it. Very bad for everybody. So I, I really, I really reiterate that we need to decouple access issues from conscience and professional judgment issues. You know, if the access issues are the problem of the of the society at large to solve, they're not because we're not just talking about assisted suicide. You know, couldn't we all uh, just just work on this and, and assume that this is our, the last moral issue that's going to come before Canadian society? You know, we've had a few in the past. You know, we had the abortion. Thank goodness, you know, assisted suicide and euthanasia. That's it, folks. You know, it can't get any worse than this. You know, this is the last, the last serious issue we're going to have to solve. You know, what, what's the likelihood? It's, it's more a case of marveling at the capacity of humans to come up with bigger and bigger problems. So that uh, in 20 or 30 years, what, what is unthinkable or, or outrageous now is going to be proposed as simply the next step. In, and becoming more sophisticated and, and more uh, capable of, ca of catering to the wants of everybody. So, fine, if society is going to keep coming up with new outrageous things that it thinks should be allowable behavior. Then it's time to to, to solve this this um, fallacious and unnecessary uh, direct uh, coupling of, of conscience rights and professional judgment rights with every new innovation with the access to every innovation. So that's, I, I hope I'm not being, I hope I'm being clear about that, you know. If you say that, okay, we're, we're going to start something new, we're going to start a genetic um, design of your baby. You know, because in China they've now shown how you can insert um, uh, genetic material into the germline, you can actually, uh, you can actually change the, the, the features of a child. You could, you could do some artificial uh, reproduction technology, and you really could start to design your child. So, um, what you know, then there's the, what Margaret Somerville calls the right of a child to be born with um, their genome unaltered, their genome intact from the way it was inherited. So, what, what, what about that right? So, there are all sorts of things. So, if you're not but let's just say somebody goes to court and they say, for very good reasons, you know, I have this dread disease in my family, and we can just fix this in this egg and this sperm. Uh, I know that my next child won't have this disease, and isn't that a wonderful thing for all of humanity? And while we're at it, I'd rather that they have long hair in the front. So <laughs> we can fix that too. But isn't that okay? And, you know, that's going to fly, isn't it? And then you're going to have an obstetrician or someone who's actually worked. On on um, on helping infertile couples get pregnant, who who is then expected to provide that service? You know, prenatal uh, embryo biopsy is common right now. It's, it's being done with, with embryos, and, and uh, so in other words, we need to solve this this access access issues um, needs to be society's problem. We need to solve it the way it is currently coupled to conscience rights. Yeah.